back of them in their sand and all that, but uh, you know, they probably don't make very much money. People kind of plead in poverty. Some of them in absolute terms in countries overseas, and sometimes here, because the tendency for all of us is to compare ourselves with people with more money than we have. And that even happens, by the way, among the uber rich, people who've got three or four different homes around the world compare themselves with people who've got three, four, five or six different homes and a couple of private jets as well. And everyone compares themselves with someone better off than they are. So today I want to remind us that many of us watching this, not all, but many, are very well off uh, in global terms and, and have a responsibility to do something with that uh, provision which uh, God has provided. I'd like to read uh, a verse that comes right at the end of a fairly dramatic story that Jesus tells, quite a brutal story of uh, slavery in the uh, first century, um, where Jesus says, look, uh, you better be careful here because punishment levels for servants who do a bad job will be based on whether or not they really had lots of responsibility and, and therefore should have known better, or very little responsibility and didn't know very much, so their punishment will be lighter. Uh, and he ends with this phrase, uh, which I'd like to read to you from the New Living Translation. It got on my iPad, actually. I did have a New Living Translation at home, uh, but I gave it to my friend Christopher, who didn't have uh, a contemporary version uh, of the Bible uh, uh, for him to read. So I'm happy to read it to you from my iPad. And this is what it says at the end of Luke 12, the second part of verse 48. Jesus summarises his teaching to the disciples about this, this story, this parable he tells. When someone has been given much, much will be required in return. And when someone has been entrusted with much, even more will be required. Even more will be required. If we've been given a lot, there's expectations upon us which are greater. Some of us during lockdown uh, have found that we spent slightly less money than we normally spend on things like uh, eating out or perhaps going to the cinema or to the theatre. And so our monthly expenditure has been somewhat reduced. I was in a, a Zoom meeting not so long ago uh, where someone actually encouraged people to give to a particular cause because they said, uh, my wife and I have saved a little bit of money, quite a bit actually, during lockdown because we haven't been out anything like as much. There's been nowhere to go. So we've saved quite a bit of money. So far from being impoverished, we're actually a bit better off than we were. Now, frankly, if we're in that state, we do have a responsibility to others because uh, the nation of Britain, the Western world, the whole world is divided into two in some ways. The people who are a bit better off during lockdown and people who've been furloughed or who face unemployment or who actually are unemployed and now amazingly find themselves accessing a food bank or something like that, they're much worse off. So if we've saved money or perhaps that we found ourselves with about the same level of money, we ought to think of all the blessings that we have had to be in that state. If we've had a garden to be outside in, if we're not lonely, if we've had enough food and so on and so on. So Jesus says we should be, if we're in receipt of stuff, be willing to share it because much is required of us. We shouldn't just rest on our laurels and selfishly enjoy it, but think of those who aren't as fortunate as we are. And of course, that's true in national terms. Uh, in the Western world, most of us are part of rich nations, Australia, Great Britain, most of Europe, America and so on. Uh, it's interesting that therefore we have a responsibility as a nation of Great Britain, where I live, uh, to be generous because we are a rich country. Some of us have been very concerned uh, in the last few days at the news that the Foreign Office and the Department for International Development uh, that give grants overseas have been merged together. Now, there are some good technical bureaucratic reasons for this. The hope is it will be more efficient, that, that people will not overlap in their various roles. They're both looking overseas and, and that there will be a kind of economies of scale, less people having to do uh, things, money will be saved and it will be more efficient. But of course, for many of us, we face a kind of moral dilemma. 
Should our money in Great Britain, rich nation though we are, much being required of us, this passage in Luke, should we really have a process of giving money to the neediest people in the world based on our foreign policy objectives so that we have our money with strings attached, so that we give where it will accomplish some kind of political end rather than meet the needs of the most vulnerable addressing them independently of whether we gain a political advantage by blessing that particular country, simply looking for the greatest level of need. So that's a practical example of the way both rich communities, rich countries, as well as rich, in global terms, individuals, need to be generous today in reaching out and caring for those who simply don't have the resources that we have available to us. So today, remind yourself of how much you've been blessed. And if you're in the category of blessing rather than struggle, count your blessings and be willing to share generously with those who have need.